Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. Today we're working on a Drake L7. Awesome amplifiers. These are kind of rare. You don't see a lot of them around. So, I looked at the air variable capacitors. These are like unobtainium. They are in good condition. So, I told the customer it's worth it to proceed. Meters check out okay, also unobtainium. So he sent it to someone a couple times, he tried to fix it, and they claimed when they got it, it worked, but uh, then the customer got it back and it didn't work. So right off the bat, this is folded down, one of the plate blocking caps, you can see it's damaged. So I'm going to replace both of these, I'm going to put in two 500 picofarad doorknob caps in parallel. I'll install them right here. This assembly right here, it's like 40 something picofarads. These are notorious for failing. This one looks okay right now, but I'm going to replace that with a 50 puff, you know, 50 picofarad doorknob cap. I'll make an assembly and put it right there. And uh, I'll go ahead and ground the grids. He sent me another fan. I don't know why. I don't know if this one's noisy. It might be. If it is, I'll swap it out. We've got the power supply here. It's over on the other side of the bench. Uh, someone already installed the Harbach kit. I'll go over that, make sure that was done correctly. A lot of series glitch resistor. And uh, add some meter protection so he doesn't have to worry about damaging the unobtainium plate current meter. That's about it. So I'm going to get to work and I'll see you guys in a bit. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com. I'm back with the completed Drake L7. Just removed the tubes. There's one and the other one is over to the left. So I'm going to explain everything I did. I removed those ceramic disc capacitors that were used for the plate blocking caps. One was damaged. I made an assembly here, put in two brand new 500 picofarad doorknob capacitors. I took out that green film type cap you see here. It's prone to failing and I put a doorknob cap in, a 50 picofarad one. So I had to take this coil out because one of the fit, one of the stator pieces, the rotating one on the air variable capacitor was burned on the corner and it was there was like a glop so I filed it and then used a nail type file to give it a nice smooth finish Then I used alcohol on a q-tip to get the residue off and I put the coil back in oh and one of these capacitors down there one of the mica caps was it didn't have a, a good solder connection so I refixed that cleaned the rotor switch with the oxy gold which is down here put the coil back in and tested it for full output on all bands so works as it should. So I'm going to show you the bottom and everything I did down there. See you soon. Okay, so I, for, I forgot to mention that I also changed the fan, brand new fan. I grounded all the grids. I reused the solder tab that was already in there that's secured to the chassis so I didn't have to drill any new holes. I cleaned the TR slash bias relay with deoxy gold. I put a 10 amp 1 kV diode between the B negative and ground to clamp the B negative if there's ever short on B positive, protect the metering. I also did work on the power supply. Already had the Harbach kit in it, checked it over, looked good. This high volt, there was a high voltage wire on this side, it had arced through at some point, so I replaced that. Um, I changed the high voltage wire on that side over here. The resistors were the 50K type and they were Dale, they were uh, not the stock ones. Uh, the material was flaking off, so I put 100k resistors in that were on cooler, and they still provide enough voltage to put the tubes in a cutoff. I replaced the 0.82 resistor that was blown apart. They just blow apart too easy. I always put a 10 ohm, 10 watt in there, so it's more like a glitch, series glitch, and it'll limit the fault current if there's an issue. So, to put the cover back on that. The SO239s are good. Sorry, it's late here. I have been very, very busy here doing a lot of different things. And uh, I've been testing the 
6 meter amp, it's almost the point where I can plug the tube in and make a video. So, finally get that thing out of here, but I just wanted to make sure all my T's are crossed and all my I's are dotted. You know, I uh, don't leave any stone unturned. I want the customer to be very happy. And then when that's out of here, next is the 80 through 15 meter amps. Yes, 80 through 15. It won't go up on 10. Only 15. With uh, the setup, it's just gonna the, there's gonna be too much stray lead length and uh, strain ductance. It's just not gonna it's just not gonna work up there. So, but thank you for watching. Website is amprepairguy.com. Phone number is 203-892-4119. That's 203-892-4119. And someone else had their hands in this. Uh, I guess it was a specialist that works on this stuff, and it just it was all sorts of messed up. But now she is good to go, and the customer. Like all other amplifiers, got a video of it working on the one band of their choice. So, thanks for watching. 73AmpRepairGuy.com. Catch you later.